Matrix Podcast, episode 282. Okay. All right, everyone, shut the f*** up. Yeah. Podcast, the Wheel of Time re re read podcast now covering Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, book three, The Dragon Reborn. With me as always is Jono. Jono. And I'm Joe, and Tom's a lot here to a lot study your math. <laughs> <laughs> study your grammar. <laughs> Tom here many times. A lot lot. Good. 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 <laughs> We're getting close so anyway, to uh, 300, uh, you know. 300 episodes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we are creeping up on 300. I mean, we There's won't get like for this with this book, yeah. right? It'll It'll be like happy year away, but still, yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not quite true. Well, let's, let's pull out the old schedule and see when that is. <laughs> we should. Yeah, we're we're gonna, we just spent twenty minutes talking about how schedules fucked. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, it's, it's not that fucked fuck, though. And also, I'm purposely keeping this where it is. Episode three hundred, guys. I don't know if you know this, but it times out to be approximately when we did the Twat, Twat Charity Marathon last year. Kind of perfect. So, <laughs> so if we do that again as an annual event, pretty good 300 mark episode for it. <laughs> that's 18 weeks well, from I mean, now. We can do that because we can make <clears throat> four months. So June to July? Wait, Tom, you froze a little bit. What'd you say? He froze again. Uh, I was like, well, we can do the charity event literally anytime we want. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. So we can just move it up we can. So three weeks or whatever. Yeah. Or we'll just keep recording our regular scheduled recordings and go and just go right to 301 and not care. <laughs> and, then, and, then we'll go, and then we'll be like, it's episode 300! And then we'll be like, wait, aren't you on 307? We don't fuck it. Also, it should be noted that we once again, we got overly excited <clears throat> Our number just like we do every fucking time like wow 282 that's now, this one's this one's a big deal <laughs> but 282 is not a big deal next week 283 not 282 yeah. 300 dummy well then why do um, we bring up 300 because <laughs> we're close have to 300 we, we should have 300 guests on for the 300th episode i feel like oh we're my happy. god that'd be the greatest thing ever we need a two-hour time block of the wheel of time charity 24 how many hours Honestly, if, if, if every guest was on for if every guest was on for sixty minutes, it would or one one minute, it would take five hours. <laughs> what do you so, mean? so there you <laughs> go? So they, so they only so they only get thirty seconds and it's a two and a half hour time block. Oh, okay, yeah, that works actually. That's, it works out. We'll be like, this is blah 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 from this podcast, and we'll be like, hey guys, we'll be like, shut the fuck up, your time's up. <laughs> <You're radical. laughs> get, get, in, get in here, Harriet. Shut up, Harriet. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tom strips this time. You next. <laughs> be the most yeah. incredible Zoom call ever. <laughs> Get off just, with no just crossover. constantly admitting people and then kicking them out of the stream. <laughs> yes, no, no crossover guests allowed. So like, you literally have thirty seconds of like, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. Hi, it's Alan Romanchuk. I'm really proud of him. Get off! Like, like what the fuck? <laughs> We'd have to have three hundred people waiting in a queue. It'd be so hard. <laughs> you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're, you're out. Yeah, but every time you kick somebody out, they're gone. It does. It gets Unless easier. they try to. Re- right. It does get easier. Unless they try to rejoin, <laughs> like a terrorist. We should. Uh, we should think it's this like, idea through a little bit more when we're not drunk. If we have three hundred like- people, <laughs> if we had three hundred people in the queue. And we're just like, look, once you're kicked out, you're out. And somebody tried to rejoin, I would call the FBI and label them a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> here's here's an idea. What if we've come up with one like weirdly interesting question that everyone like comes prearranged with an answer and they pop on, they say their answer, we respond real fast and we kick them out. They only have 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Barely enough time to say their name. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll be like, hey, here's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, and then, and then we kick them out. <laughs> My answer is Gallup. 
Interesting. Bad, but it's <laughs> wrong. But you're gone. <laughs> the answer for everything is going to be interesting. <laughs> it would be incredible. Well, we get tired of that. <laughs> Moving on. Also, an Ooh. hour and a half into that, we're either going to be like, well, that's fucking stupid. We've heard that 30 times. <laughs> or we're just like, just hammer Wait, it. That's, just like, there you go. Maybe it's something that we tally how many times we get the same answer, and it's like a poll. <laughs> Who would even listen to that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a live stream poll. Live poll. Madness. <laughs> I think people would listen just to see if we can pull it off. I don't think they would. Hey, and also we can't. Also, there'd be 300 people who listen to it. <laughs> and that's true. We can't. That's it's an impossibility. I don't know why we're still talking about it. We haven't. But stop. It's a good, hours ago. It's a good, <laughs> we should invite 300 random strangers on. It's a good way to grow our listener base. They would all download the show. And that would be you like, can man, all be on the show. anyone can be on the show if they join our Patreon for 30 seconds. Um, Patreon too. make it more exclusive. You have to pay to listen to your 30 second rants about. No, no, they're, they're, they have to pay to be on the show. They're, they can listen to it for free. after that. <laughs> Anyway, well, what are you guys been reading? Sense. So many comics. Anyway, John? <laughs> uh, what am I reading? Oh, um, I'm not real proud of this. Uh, tax deduction guidebooks, because I own it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. We're, uh, we're but then now. I'm going to be starting um, uh, A Little Hatred, or whatever the first of the next series of Joe Abercrombie. But yeah, tax deduction books. Did you is say For the book. Love of the Patriot? What? What did you say? I, I said um the next like the next book in uh, Joe Abercrombie series. But what did what did you think it was called? Love of Peace or something like that is what it's called. Uh, okay. Uh, or a little bit of hatred. Um, I forget. A which little one. bit of hatred. Yeah. Those are really two different titles. Very different titles. Well, I think one of them is a song by uh, <laughs> uh, Mambo Number no. Five. Is all I've got in my head now. Mambo Number no. no. Five. Patriot, hold on. Blue oh. Vega. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lou Vega also was all about tax deductions. Lou Vega. <laughs> That's not a great. I wish you'd call him any other. Uh, uh yay. <laughs> Um, I've been watching WandaVision. You guys? No, I haven't been watching WandaVision. I rewatched Black Summer, like the Netflix zombie little miniseries. Why has it got to be Black Summer? <laughs> uh, be- because all the black people turn into zombies. And then um, <laughs> <clears throat> while I was rewatching it, I would look looked up to see if there was going to be a season two, and I found out it was like a spinoff of a sci fi show. So I've been watching that, which is Summer much, black. much. Much worse. It's just called Z Nation. It's like super campy, like bad cable show. And I was like, how did this Netflix show come out of this? But I'm still <laughs> watching it. Like I'm, I'm actually enjoying it. So what happens with like the mixed race? Half zombie. <laughs> Half zombie. Stupid question. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? It's called a blend. Is it zombie or half or combat? There's actually a. <laughs> People, people on Z Nation called blends, <laughs> but they're, but they're not, they're not black friends. They're uh, damn it, is my black friend. <laughs> they're half my human, half zombies. <laughs> it's even more racist. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh man, but this, but the key is that the that means that they're half black, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, nobody can be half human, half zombie if they're not half black. Yeah, we. Uh, you, you're either white, a black zombie, or a blunt. <laughs> Other than white zombie, briefly famous in the mid nineties. Uh, That's fantastic. <laughs> it's like they yeah. listen to our show. I don't understand. I don't understand why we don't have more sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> we Lock off. we touch on all the we're listen we're three straight white men i mean like wh- how much more diverse could you want what yeah. could you ask for we understand the plight of <laughs> ourselves yeah <laughs> everybody uh, we have our ear to the ground we know what's going on you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
As I literally <laughs> I feel said, like I'm a landlord yeah. too. Like that thing sounds more in touch with reality. What do you read? We're definitely, we're <laughs> definitely reading reading the room of a uh, modern culture right now. We're, I think we're doing a great job. It's not stuck in the mud from uh, <laughs> ten years ago in any way, shape, or form. That's fine. We're fine. We're fine, guys. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah. We're fine. You want to hear the weirdest thing? Guess what we are? Middle-aged white huh. men. That is interesting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm still middle-aged, I think. Not for I mean, long. I don't consider myself middle-aged because I know when I'm like 100, there'll be like pills that make us like 30 again. So, Go bar! I think, uh, yeah. I think uh, 100 will be middle-aged. You know, like... I love what I'll you're probably live to, I'll probably be like 203 or so when I die. That makes sense to me. Uh, what I love is Tom's like, I'm still middle-aged and I'm like looking at myself like, am I even middle-aged yet? And uh, I'm turning 36 and 60. I don't, I don't think you're quite you're not middle-aged. You're not middle-aged, <laughs> I don't think. I think you have to be 40. Like, yeah, middle-aged is like 40. You have to be quote-unquote over the hill. <laughs> no, you have to be crested. I think you have to be capable of having a midlife crisis to be middle-aged and you're not too young. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you are a giant child. <laughs> I did buy I did buy a new car over the weekend though. Oh, what'd you oh, yeah. get? It wasn't a sports car though, so I guess not a bit in life crisis. Guess we'll wait again. It would be really amazing considering where you live and how cold it is if you had like a red sports car convertible. <laughs> Check out this car I got for my commute into Boston. Huh, you idiot. <laughs> I drive it three months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're watching The Staircase which by the way sounds like the most boring thing you've ever heard I know what you're talking about it's that guy that pushed his wife down the staircase <laughs> well uh, I haven't finished yet but I love <laughs> uh, in theory in theory well obviously I mean like the first episode there's a push down there's a potential push down the staircase what I'm fascinated by is the fact that it's 13 fucking seasons long or 13 episodes. Wow, 13 seasons. That staircase. We, ne- season. <laughs> we never finished it. <laughs> How far did you get? It's, I, by season I don't six, stop. she hits the middle of the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think episode two or three, and then we were just like, this is ridiculous. We're, like, we're like, what team. people don't get is they think I push her down the stairs, like, and he's got all these like alternate theories, and I'm like, all right, you did this. <laughs> Move it on. There's some weird shit that happens later that I'm like, hey, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Roran. Did you just come down a staircase? Hi. Let me turn on the audio. Hi. Hi, bye. Hi. No one can hear us. Now we can And you're all alone. <laughs> Is that, who's that? Tom and Baba. Tom and Baba? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Baba? Yeah. No, it's Jono. Hey, Violet. Jono. <laughs> you think Jono is your grandfather? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Violet, can you say football? Oh, yeah, Donna, you're a grandfather and it's your birthday. <laughs> Yay. Violet, can you say football? Football. Good. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Violet's going to go to kindergarten and share stories with all of her friends about like bedtime and like, yeah, and then every night. Once a week when I go to bed, I go to my dad's podcast and say goodbye to my uncle and uh, my my grandfather. <laughs> Weird. Uh, once a week, once a week, my dad gets shit faced in his uh, office talking to his friends on the on the computer. <laughs> One of whom is my uncle, the other is my grandfather. Looks nothing like my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, finish what you're saying, Donna, because that was like a weird transition. Oh, I, 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 you know, in fairness to Tom, I have no idea how this is going to be 13 episodes, even though there's still somehow we're 10 episodes in, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I, I, I won't give it away. I'm not like uh, his wife's life, uh, but like, how is this still a show that's this long? Is a weirdly fascinating question that almost deserves being watched just for that alone. 
<laughs> they should make a documentary about the executive at Netflix that signed off on this being 13 episodes. <laughs> well, they, started, they started recording. He's got to be homeless now. <laughs> but even though it came out a couple of years ago, they started recording it in 2001 when the fucking thing happened. So I'm like, why did this ever exist as a movie? Like it's live film of them talking about like how to deal with a trial. I'm like, why was this ever put together? Like that's actually more fascinating. And I've tried yeah, to stay that off. Seems of, like, insane. Like, it's just kind of like, hey, by the way, I'm accused of murder. Let me get a documentary crew in here for 20 years from now. Like what? <laughs> that's literally what's fucking happened. Like it just deserves its own stupidity. Uh, but also like, like I, I, I want it to go off because it's really a part of it. It's really not that interesting, but it just, it's, it's really not serving. Like again, I hope the last episode just says, by the way, uh, I'm his neighbor. I was just fascinated. I thought he was a murderer the whole time. <laughs> he just let me film it because I don't know. I, I or like, like, you know, actually I knew who the killer was the whole time. It was the kid. Like what the fuck? That's what it is. It's just like, well, listen, I knew it was him the whole time. I just didn't say anything because I'm the camera guy. <laughs> We're going to have to revisit, <laughs> revisit that. <laughs> like, I, mean, I was, I wanted to say that he did it so many times, but I'm filming, so I'm not allowed to talk. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to talk. You know, it's like The Office. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you can't, like, you can't watch someone like when you find out that she fell from three steps high. That's it, and like bled out on the floor you're like well that's obviously murder <laughs> like there's no way you don't fall that far but then like there's sorts of weird things with a murder weapon going on or like like supposed murder weapon like i don't know Jono. just for future reference like when lauren falls down three stairs she she tends to twist like a crazy like rag doll and then land in weird positions you know just in for, just for future reference on the recording if she happens to die yeah, yeah, and you know what else? Hey, for just future case, reference, guys. In case that ever happens and everybody thinks it's weird, I gotta say, I also fall funny every time I take out a new life insurance policy on myself. Yeah, uh, yeah, just like, for future yeah. reference. Even no, funnier no. than usual. <laughs> <laughs> so the amount of times that I've sent, like, uh, well, I think both of you guys, but also uh, my wife, uh, the uh, gif of uh, the tool chest falling down the stairs from Home Alone 2. Yeah. Just, you want to watch that? And I'm like, hold on. Now, just going to send you this from a foot and a half away. Uh, probably about 20, 30 times because it's never not topical to send tool chests downstairs when you're watching it. I see. All right. I see. If we don't get on this book and start powering through, we got to go. We got to go. Tom said it's important. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're. we're Already pushing past nine o'clock now. Hey, spoiler warning, guys. Yeah. This is our episode covering the Dragon Reborn, written by Robert Jordan, chapters 12 through 17, and we may or may not talk about anything and everything. You know? Too many Possible. chapters. Possible. Yeah. You know, I can, uh, just just off the top of my head, I'm going to know that multiple I mean, there's a, black objects, there's a mat. spoilers yeah. are going to be discussed during this episode. <laughs> yeah, there's a big spoiler in just one of my notes. <laughs> for the for the uh recap yeah. all right chapter 12 the maryland seat tom what's the name of the chapter and who's the uh a maryland seat? seat come on jesus christ seriously uh yeah that's right i just put bear meets with swan and then i just wrote rand horn matt shanchin sorry i had to read <laughs> it said may i guess i ought to correct it to may <laughs> rand horn may <laughs> sean chan <laughs> so basically so do philadelphia Baron's just um, catching a swan up on the, you know, what's been going on, <laughs> which is yeah. interesting. It's interesting to see her reactions. It is. I agree. I like the discussion and we can get there in a minute, but the, the false dragon talk, but I wrote, we meet Suwan and I know we've met her before, but this is the first, like, well, it's her perspective, number one, but two, it seems like really more in depth. Like we finally get to see, kind of who she is for real you know not just some like facade that she shows yeah the only time up, we've met her up in the borderlands we met her in book two from both a moraine point of view and a rand point of view really and then yeah brief- but we also saw her on the boat a little bit yeah that's true too but the, that was the most that was the closest to this i think was the boat yeah. scene. Thing. this is yeah. her real thank you <laughs> yeah i'm on a boat uh <laughs> thank you i didn't think that was me. audible it was. <laughs> you just measuring. Yeah, you know, that you're just whispering teeth to yourself. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> T pain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot. I'll take uh, uh, Moraine and T pain. T pain. <laughs> well, Moraine's not going. She's already gone. Oh, I guess go on. Just T pain. Oh fuck! I guess I'll take that bitch too. <laughs> I'll just start but calling. Wait. Can we just start calling Swan S pain or something? <laughs> no. Actually, let's just call her T pain. I mean, why not? Stop, with it. Let's stop pronouncing that name. Yeah, it is Swan. Sw- Sw- <laughs> it seems like it should be easy, but it's not. See you in. Well, I mean, I'm going. Uh, I wrote, I'm going we, I wrote that we see that she's vulnerable, which I guess I mean, like, it's scarier from her perspective than she lets on, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Like, Moraine never really lets on how much in danger she actually is from other sisters in the tower. Like, if they Baron. knew what she was doing. But yeah. Suwan is, like, in the middle of all of them. So she's, like, constantly freaked out that someone's going to find out she knows yeah. that Dragon Reborn is alive, that she knows who it is, that she knows what Moraine's doing, that, like, all this shit. Like, yeah, she's Moraine's borderline really gone rogue. Yeah. Really, the fact that Moraine has realized how more, much, how important everything is, and so is Swan, but also how much even trying her hardest, she can't control the situation. Whereas Swan views the tower as kind of like, well, we have to keep it strong. We have to like kind of be there. We have to kind of like guide and, you know, should some shit go down, you know, there may not be a good guide in charge of the tower. Whereas Moraine is just kind of like, look, if shit goes wrong, you know, hopefully rants or that's all that she seems to really care about at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's just kind of like really shows, well, fun. She's been traveling with Rand the whole time and seeing prophecies fulfilled, uh, in a way that's not expected, but to kind of, you know, Moraine as an Aes Sedai still cares about the institution, but also recognizes that the world's going to fucking burn. So whatever, just as long as we get there. So Moraine has her priorities straight. Yeah. Unlike T Pain. And then later Egwene. Yeah, that's also gonna, you know, yeah. Yeah. everybody yeah. hates when we say that. Hold on a second. Pongo, go outside. Uh P Pain. Go on. Well, there's no carpet in here. So her like fucking nails are like clacking on the ground behind me. And I'm like, you probably can't hear that, but you probably can. Cause she's yeah. being quiet, but at the same time, I'm like, just either lay the fuck down or get the fuck out. Yeah. You talking about anyway, wife, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Either lay down or get the fuck out. Uh, the black haired bitch behind me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Pete. I, I wrote that this is kind of a cool mirroring of uh, the Pedro Nile uh, prologue scene. Kind of yeah, the same I thing, agree. In a way, it's yeah. a good catch up from someone who had been, like you said, right there in the thick of it in Falm. In this case, uh, Baron versus uh, what's his dick, Fire. Um, it, it, you know, it's funny to me. Like, like my first thought is like, I always like the box. Like, of course, what a dumb Jono thing. Like that little box. Oh no, I like, like it too. I wrote Firebox of Spiral. <clears throat> this is cool. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, fast- everybody likes the box. Well, not everybody. Uh, I've read I've read rumors of others. Uh, gays. No, 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 not more gays. Um, uh, she's she'll she'll play with her own. Um, so there's a to me like my question is, what does this poor maid who cleans her office do? Like like pretty much like does she feather dust it or like like mm-hmm. is there, like don't touch because that could go really wrong really fast for an overly industrial. <laughs> She just she just picks it up to wipe the desk down and just bursts into flame. <laughs> we lost we lost another maid. Get that Nidral Butler in here. He'd be good at this. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't bring the Mirdral in. He's very good at his job. All right. He's, He's very, very good at his job. job. He doesn't burst into flame when he picks it up for some reason. <laughs> or maybe he does. Oh, yeah. And he heals. I don't know. Um, I'm also kind of like we should really have seen this awesome garden she's got because like it sounds like she's got a huge walkthrough garden that's just right off her like uh quarters and it's not all the way at the top of the fucking uh tower because that's where elida gets her quarters but it's just kind of like again we even see i think it's from elaine's point of view or not elaine Gwen's point of view that no one uses this place huge waste of time like they, they yeah, have I don't, a, I'm, I'm interested to see I guess this is kind of, you know what that's kind of a show thoughts I'll save it yep. pay money um, for our Patreon thoughts <laughs> <laughs> well I mean we don't have a whole yeah. lot to talk about in those chapters in terms of visual aspects yeah. um, how about gardens 
So Leanne comes in 10 years ago, Tom said something like, that's pretty depressing for Leanne. She gets sent out of the room every time something cool happens. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree. Cause what, what happens? Leanne comes in and says, Baron's here. And you know, Swan. And then she's like, good. Uh, you can go. And she's like, what? All right. What the fuck? Yeah. Man? Yeah. If, 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 Le- if Leanne was super into gossip, this would ruin her life every time. Oh, finally, or, somebody interesting is coming in. Like, wait outside. God damn it. God damn it. At least uh, I can eavesdrop. Fuck, I can't do that either. So, yeah. Uh, news, news, news times. The catch-up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Himself, which I don't know if I'd say proclaimed himself so much as kind of let it happen briefly. Um, I'm fascinated by this. Like, So he's like, no more false dragons as soon as it happened. Tame is captured. The dude from like Hayden Merck is uh, executed. But they had like both times like, instantaneously a crazy vision in the sky and their horses through them. What the fuck does that look like? It's kind of like charging through into a battle or something. Well, or, like they said there was varying degree, like uh, not degrees, um, <laughs> recollections, I suppose, of like what happened in the sky, like reports. Like no one says like no one knew they all name. saw the same thing. <laughs> No, I don't even think they saw that. I think it was just like something happened, and then no, they, they but like what she says is that like <clears throat> both times they were kind of like in the midst of a battle, and then all of a sudden like a horse tossed them off, and something happened in the sky. Uh, but I'm, what I'm saying is like the, from the reports of multiple people in the same area, like no one saw the same thing in the sky. You know what I mean? Could, like it wasn't just Rand versus Ishmael in the sky, like Fom. It was like weird shit happened. Maybe they saw that. I don't know. It but could like. <laughs> I just imagine like what like some <clears throat> Eric was like, taking a piss and then all of a sudden just like fell over backwards like mid urine and just yeah. like like it didn't have to be in a battle. <laughs> like ten years ago, all we did was make a bunch of horse noises. I mean, horse. I'm sorry, I wrote that wrong. You're you're basically picturing somebody like <clears throat> choking themselves and jerking off and then dying because they see rent, like autoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Yes, I am thinking about that. Oh, shit, I saw the dragon reborn. Take him, capture him. <laughs> no, it was O-Face. <laughs> it's funny. Like, the guy at Hayden Merck was executed, but not by his own people. He was hanged. Like, oh, that's weird. With his dick out. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a little different. <laughs> uh, he hung himself, it, though. Really? With his pants down. Oh, I see. <laughs> Must have seen the dragon reborn. To admit. No, <laughs> oh, just, just jerking off. No, he's just jerking off. <laughs> uh, he was actually in his tent at the time. He didn't see the sky at all. <laughs> just yanking on a bone. <laughs> just yanking up a bone. Uh, so she mentions the. I, cha- I changed it to yanking. I know. I know. I got you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, the horn it's is crit- not it's critical. Do Rand. And she's like, well, why not? I'm like, oh. Because Matt blew it, but don't worry, we can kill him in the basement. He's just give him a couple hours. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, they the most really interesting. Like that. How the long do you think they were contemplating it? I, I, you know, honestly, <sighs> any credence at all, you let a Tavir and die, then you're a fucking moron because they're literally spun out for a reason. Like, yeah, that, that might be the only reason, or maybe that's what saved them. That, I mean, that's the epitome of thinking you know better than the pattern. And I get the idea that you think you can shape it a little bit, and you're not wrong, right? I mean, that's why you're there, technically. But mm-hmm. I, the idea of just let the Taviran die because he blew the horn seems like such a fucking just, I know better than you, uh, God and or creation and or whatever, you know, you know deus ex machina. Like, it's just what about- dumb. What about what? What about what we? What about what we see in a minute here, where she says to two teenage girls, basically, or three, that like, I can't trust a single person in this entire nation city that I rule to hunt the Black Aja. But I wonder who I've got hanging around that could blow the horn of Elder. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's insane. Hello. Obviously, she doesn't trust anybody. Well, I think in terms of letting Matt die, it was it would be to give it to Rand because she even says like it was it should have stayed with him. Like, why'd you bring it back? You know, kind no, of, no, like no, it, no, it's not it's not that she thinks like somebody there will do it. It's that she's oh, just no, like she she, she, she realizes better. it'll it'll never get back to Rand safely. So she's contemplating who in the tower she could possibly handle. Oh, to and then five eight, seconds later, she's like, eight. I don't trust anyone. Yeah, she mentioned <laughs> orders as a possibility. <laughs> 
It's like, insane. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good point. Good point. My bad. Good talk, Tommy Bear. Um. Anyway, yeah, good so, catch. Good catch. Like, thing. like fish in a in a net. <laughs> a silver pike in a boat with T pain. <laughs> Uh, another thing that fascinates me here from uh, Varen, she's like, the Shantan are gone. And I'm like, who gives a shit about that? And like, Varen's like, well, you know, they're named the Forerunners, which means that there's something behind it. So, yeah, she's like, until you have ed- evidence, shut the fuck up. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about this foreign invading army from over the sea that uses I people think- like Channel on leashes to kill people. Yeah. Let's talk about <laughs> important like, things. She's like, the name that I'm giving you is evidence that they'll be back. <laughs> like when do you not understand <laughs> i'm telling it to you right now <laughs> like, what's what's the name of this army those who come before the giant massive army that will conquer literally half the continent doesn't sound familiar i'm not worried about that it doesn't sound dangerous either that or we need to worry about them <laughs> baron just says the sean chan and, and swan's just like the guy that mows the wall <laughs> Sean Chan. Sean Chan, he's a hit and run driver. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we make that joke? <laughs> I think it was way a back long, when we had Alex. A long time Alex ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Asian uh, driving <laughs> reference. <It's> funny. <laughs> Listen, it was, I don't think it was us that said it. I'm pretty sure it was Allie. So, you, know, yes. like, you can thank Allie and Gus <laughs> for uh, it's, Allie's current it's state a call. It's a callback. <laughs> um, let me think about it uh, yeah I, could, I guess that's it yeah that's really it she basically you know, says now tell me all about the girls you know like she's yeah. like okay you got you covered ran the horn the dagger mad and all that and he's like she's like now say tell me every fucking thing these girls did before they come into my office <laughs> Which, by the way I think that's uh, it's, uh, not something you're supposed to ask about anymore <laughs> <laughs> chapter 13 is called punishments Tom uh, <laughs> who's the POV? The queen. That's part of the thing we always say. A queen and Elaine talk through a glory hole. <laughs> All three girls <laughs> meet with Swan. A <laughs> queen and Elaine are to be raised to accept it. Elaine leaves to get a spank. <laughs> correct. It goes a long while with the glory hole thing. All I do words. think, <laughs> like, like as soon as you can channel air, you're allowed to use the glory hole. <laughs> Um, ten oh, years yeah. ago, Tom, you said, "Why don't they just put a string through there with two cups on either side of it?" <laughs> I mean, it, since we've since made it grow into glory hole talk, I'm like, well, now why not just do air dildos? Yeah, you can do the air mounted dildo. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So many, so many bad things coming from this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do feel oh, bad to a certain extent. It's also clueless, but they're like, we should be heroes. Uh, you should be. Also, you're dumber than fuck to have walked off with uh, a black a black aja who literally told you, hey, the black aja are out there, so you know you can't trust anyone. I, uh, a real quick, interesting note from our old podcast. We hadn't read the last episode or the book yet so it hasn't come out yet so we still thought at the time that matt would be coming back to the tower at some point to get the horn mm. so i thought that was kind of interesting anyway throwaway moment but no but that's an interesting thing that well it doesn't matter but it's I, just kind of interesting that as we yeah. continue our perspective is gonna like warp a little bit because like we hadn't read the last book yet and that's our this fault. is a this is a long chapter but other than swan saying she's gonna raise them to accept it like it's kind of not a lot happens i wrote i mean they're talking about being scared they aren't to mention the black aja or laundron and don't say poster or cat (laughs) 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 next chapter (laughs) cat poster god damn it hold on I, i i just real quick, I can make it very fast, but that's <laughs> pretty tough. Um, the only things of note really are 12 other that I left with Leandrin, 13, faithful number. Uh, they tried to break into the Angriel storeroom, they missed somehow. Yeah, a, yeah, a bunch of Terangriel, which we'll find out later about dreams. Um, I love that. Now, there's spirit. some that don't we don't know what they do though they're like it's like a bale fire statue and stuff bale like fire that, right? yeah, yeah there's a lot of uh, yeah a lot of setup here for but like vague that we'll find out about later i guess but even I just, the 13 we find out about the 13 by the end of this book right 
<clears throat> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a few chapters, I believe. Um, but like, yeah, it's in uh, Egwene's testing of what a 13 can do. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love that Egwene has this thought like, maybe the Black Ajah do know what they could, what these Terang Rail does. I go, no shit, lady. Like, what do you think? Like, it's just <laughs> a little obvious to me. Um, no, they just went in and were like, we'll take <laughs> item number two, 37, 612, <laughs> and 50. And they're like, why those ones? Do you know what they do? No. Uh, so There's a weirdly specific like, look, We're, we're, we're going <clears> to... <throat> What's right, this, is, this is important. Your mother is curious. And then we're going to do a supermarket here. sweep through the Terra and Griel storeroom, and then we're out. <laughs> yeah, I, wrote, <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Elaine the Bint because uh, she's like, God, it's not my brother. And I'm like, God bless it. God, you'd be more dumb. of an idiot. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I, <laughs> like, so, what are you, five years old? It's, He's my stepbrother, not my actual brother. Okay, Elaine. Um, so three sisters died, two warders, seven guards, nine servants. It's kind of weird because other than that, they're never really spoken again in the next, other than this next like three chapter period. And that's it. Even though that's rub off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I assume he's calling back in cause he's seen a little uh-huh. shaky. Yeah. Um, he just kicked him off and he kicked me off too. <laughs> You're both out. You listen to Joe cast. Fuck off. <laughs> There's no, uh, <laughs> Right, welcome back. Um, so I, I think Tom was mentioning it. Like more gays visited the tower and like twice like here and then uh, a light mentions it. Like you may have broken a tradition where the queen, you know, like, is so close and Andor is so close to the tower. Like, wait, oh, last I checked, the next fucking queen is Elaine. I don't think you've broken it. It just seems like a weird thing. <laughs> Even if, just, listen, first just, of all, you did say this 10 yeah. years ago. However, we did not talk about it in length in any way, shape, or form. So I will say this just, to follow up on your thought. You're not fucking wrong. It's brilliant yeah. thought. <laughs> and even if more days was like, well, this is tradition, it's over. Like the second yeah. Elaine's queen, she's like, no, it's not. And we're back. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's, oh, it's fine. It could not be more tightly done because she literally with, graduated from there. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> with, like with the very, very little bit that Morgays can channel, do you think she'll live to be like 200? <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? I bet she'll die early uh, because she marries some dumb people in her next yeah, over note. But it's just kind of like, unless Elaine dies, and then it's just kind of like, well, that was a weird thing that we probably shouldn't do anymore. It could not be a tighter fucking, like, it just screams out, like, question that, question that. No, no. I just want to point out again how she calls Galad not her brother because oh, Suan so literally says, that's a measure of stupidity I would accept in from a novice, but you're about to be accepted, so stop it kind of thing. Well, she and then it happens it. three oh, chapters And it later. never goes away, and it happens like three <laughs> chapters later. But the, here's the problem. It continues to happen for the next... <clears throat> 10 books. So that's the part where I'm like, okay, yeah, that's why you suck. Because you can't I mean, learn a simple fucking... about to cover it. Half the <laughs> anyway, Leanna is sent away with Elaine because she's always sent away when something fun happens. It's not many, <laughs> 10 years ago, and I brought up five minutes ago to get a spank. Chapter uh, 14 is called The Bite of the Thorns, and it's a gleam again. Chapter. I just put a Gwen and a neighbor hunting the Black Aja now, and they get magic letters. So these, this, <laughs> Joe thought the recap was going to be longer. He left to get a beer. He went up to get a beer, and guess what? Now he's <laughs> mad. I get to open the beer up alone. We can see you, Joey. Uh, to me, like, what's interesting about these few chapters? What, what the listen, what the viewers don't know is, I was laughing the whole time, but I was on mute. So, like, because Tom was over so quick, I just started laughing, and then you sound like Tom's you guys are making fun of me because I'm getting a beer. Uh, anyway, sorry. These are the most formative chapters to a certain extent for the entire like, for the girls, right? Like, yeah, these chappers are formative. Yep, there was no uh, <laughs> T Pain. Is- <laughs> uh, <laughs> I felt like it. He was mocking you. Yeah. Like they're they're incredibly important because it really sets up their duty for this book, book four, and you know, a great <laughs> <laughs> duty. Uh, duty. Duty. Like 
five and I think six still like, like that they kind of like create their identity around being at the black Aja hunters and you know kind of what they do yeah they really do this is like a big piece of like you know what they're doing for the next several books and even when at least they're... Elaine and Nave. yeah true one but book from now Egwene's like I'm out I... yeah. so true but even still like when Egwene becomes a Marilyn and like that's one of her first things she does is root out the black Aja as soon as she can yeah. you know like she's always <laughs> And when, when they're quasi Aes Sedai in, after Saladar, like uh, Elaine and Nynaeve, they're still, like, the bowl of the wind search is based really around, you know, kind of being concerned around those. Yeah, making sure, yeah, making sure those yeah. those uh, Black Aja don't get it. Yeah. So, I mean, like, this, these couple of chapters really fucking set that up. Yeah, you this. don't want the Blacks to be in charge of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean I'm, I'm muting my phone. <laughs> I mean, it's not, I don't know why it's funny. It's not racist in any way. It's just a thought. It's <laughs> <laughs> a really good point. <laughs> so the sea folk are in charge of the weather. <laughs> there you go. I can't wait to watch this one age. Considering what's happened in the last decade, like this is... <laughs> I'm pretty sure Joe's going to edit a lot of this up. What? No, it's fine. All this is fun. This is all stand. <laughs> um, I wrote I wrote Swan holds Neneve and Egwene back for a new secret task Swan fingers a black box and then she starts talking out loud about who she should trust <laughs> I thought was Moraine? I don't know like why is she saying all this out loud in front of them Robert Jordan come on really this is she's she's manipulating them but also this does go back to like she doesn't, she's not even sure she can trust Moraine, but she's trying to figure out who else she wants to get the horn to. Yeah, I, I, you actually hit that one, as we talked about, like, really well. Like, at first, I was like, well, that's just dumb. But then especially once she's got her thoughts out there, it's like, that's really dumb. It is funny, like, too, like, yeah. the people she knows she can trust, uh, you know, by, presumably, it would be the three Supergirls, as they're called, which I hate that to be. And then Varen, which she, are you sure you hit it? Because we coined it. That's the Wonder Girls. I'm kidding. We didn't. <laughs> uh, like so, you know, first oh, one Nazis is a dark friend, but you can't trust her. Then the second one, Moraine, you can trust her, although dies soon. Uh, Lean, you can trust her, uh, but also will be uh, neutered soon. And then Sherim. Black as well. Hey, Jono, I don't know if you knew this, but she doesn't die. She's just on the other side of an alien portal. <laughs> I don't know if I would trust Moraine. If I, w- <laughs> if I was T-Pain, I wouldn't trust Moraine just because I think Moraine would betray her as fast as anybody else as long as it protected the world. <laughs> yeah, also, like, oh, you're going to get, get spilled. On boat. I mean, if you're T-Pain and you don't get on a boat, then you not trust the person innately? I think that's true. That's, I, I think Joe's got the better point than Tom. Which yeah. is kind of obvious. Uh, I think Swan's biggest. Hey, we're all going. Can't my ride name's T-Pain. We're all getting on this boat. And, and Rip's like, shit. "No, I gotta go." <laughs> I, I, you guys talked over each other with Joe. I did. I know. I know. Tom, did you have a valid point? <laughs> did I have a valid point? Yeah. Oh, I just said, <laughs> if you're a swan, then you know you can't ride on a lionfish and do flips and shit. So, no, I did not have a valid point. So, fascinatingly, <laughs> you guys are both on the music video. So, valid points for both. Well done. Fantastic, Tom. Good job. I can only imagine um, this video, because that video, by the way, is a decade old, just like our podcast. And you know, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> yeah. Listen. <laughs> Uh, just because our references are as old as we are doesn't mean they're irrelevant. Yes. And they're still new and they're still newer than your references. So <laughs> that's exactly what I was gonna say. And then in Ace Ventura 2. <laughs> oh, Suan's there? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I like how you didn't even realize you were putting that together. I, I just was gonna reference Ace Ventura 2. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> anyway what do you think that secret <laughs> garden looks like is it just a, some guy coming out of a rhino's ass <laughs> it's her vagina god damn so yeah, obvious Joe's right it's a, it's a rhino's yeah, rubber rhino ass <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one finger coming out at first and then they're on safari. secret garden 
<laughs> By the way, one of the best uh, uh, scenes in movie history. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> So I wrote it. You know, it's so easy for them or so natural for them to be fucking scared by this. Like they're actually genuinely like, fuck, should we say yes to this? Like, this is fucked up. Like she's asking us to do this. We're just accepted. Oh, the other option. At the same time as a reader, you're like, come on, you're the heroes. Like go after it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, but it's, I, a, I mean, he does a really uh, good job of kind of like setting it up in a realistic way. <laughs> Kind of like the way Rand doesn't want to be Dragon Reborn. <clears throat> she seems more afraid for the other two than she does for her. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. And once she accepts it, she's like, oh, we're fucking doing this. Yeah, no, I, I, I <laughs> think it's one of the more... Tom, you said something amazing last night. You were like... Because <laughs> in the next chapter, she's just like, oh, Elaine, you're going to help us. Like, when <laughs> Basically, you were like, in this chapter, she tries her hardest to get a queen away, to get away from it. And then five minutes later, she's like, Elaine, you're going to help us. Because like, as in, she doesn't <laughs> give a real. fuck about Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? <laughs> who does? I, I mean, would, once the I two of them it, are in, like, <laughs> they need help. And who cares if Elaine does? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, he, you know who else agrees with that? The entire nation of Andor. Well, even, even Swan is like, I can't help, but I can't help. I don't want to involve Elaine now, maybe later, but she, there's too much shit going on with her and Morgays right now. I can't have her involved in this crap kind of thing. Like she actually like gives them a reason, uh, like a valid reason why she's like, I don't want Elaine involved right now. It's too much. True. And like, we'll get into uh, a little bit more of that in the next chapter, but there's some interesting things going on considering who is about to be released or who already is released probably. Um, but anyway, can you imagine if, uh, what's his name? Like if Raven had come to the tower, uh, just kind of like, and again, no one would have known. Cause it's not like he was going to channel. It's not like he was going to do yeah, anything. I said that a long time ago. I said like, cause well, not in that reference, but I was just like, Hey, do you think this is like, like a line of being at the tower, escorting Elaine there and then sticking around for so long. Do you think that allowed Robin time to like, you know, weed his way into Morgays and stuff? I don't think it would have affected anything because he's so much stronger. And remember, yeah, there he would have just he would have just fucked her up in the head. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a, <laughs> I'm and, taking a uh, weight off the board. Yeah, like there's a, there's an Aes Sedai there undercover that we mm-hmm. see later yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, that you know immediately t- raised. Yeah. Just immediately gets fucked over and sending like you know incorrect, awesome sex today with random guy who is definitely not forsaken. You know? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it matter? Do you think it matters that that ace that I was newly raised, uh, or would no. he have just had to kill her instead of rape her? <laughs> well, <first> off, <laughs> the only reason it matters is because like legitimate question. A little, hey, she's, she's a little strong in the power. Murder. I'm just gonna have to murder her instead of rape her. It only matters because she has or to be under murder, coffee. then rape her, then dispose of the body. Either way. Do you think he would have murdered her with an extremely bad headache, thus encompassing two of the Dark One's grand plan? She was outside. No, I think it would have been like died. Just <laughs> an air dildos. Dildos. Air dildos seven situation. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> what? What did that look like at the crime scene? <laughs> then she gets a horrible headache and runs out of the snow, gets his hypothermia, and dies. All three, I did it! Mike! <laughs> you are now Nia Bliss. Am I Nia Bliss? Who are you talking to? Gabriel? Oh, uh, not the dark one. Well, yeah. Why would you? Come out no, sex. I, would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. That'd be weird. This is my butler. What's a neutral? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> We're putting on a small radio play about Robin killing a nice guy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we covered it. <laughs> oh yeah, then they get the notes, like you said, do what I say or shut the fuck up. Which now, in fairness, who does that work on? Besides maybe like a warder or I to die, it because works. Every- it works like, on them getting out of the city, doesn't sure. it? What? It works on them getting out of the city. It works later on. I think they use it too, right? They, yeah, but if, some, if somebody showed me that on the road, I would stab them in the heart and take it and then go to like <laughs> a banker and be like, give me all the Tar of Allen's gold. What I think <laughs> seems like something like, I don't recognize this signature. Okay. So I, I don't. Mean, most people, I assume, can't even read, really, right? <clears throat> That's what the seal's for. 
I wonder if they do ha- do they have I don't know what this says. Ride, I know that Mark <laughs> riding around. <laughs> do they have messengers riding around with pictures of the new Maryland seal and like and nailing it into trees, like just in case you ever see it? Well, it should be <laughs> maybe. I don't know, maybe I don't. I don't know what their. Uh, I don't know what their weekly newsletter looks like. You know. <laughs> Uh, we did. Uh, All right. We've had our own news, lord. news, my lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But next chapter, Chom chapter fifteen. Oh wait, wait. It's called what? <laughs> Hold on. They say, "What about Matt?" And he's, she says, "I'll send word to you." And then they say, "What about Matt?" And she said, "I said I'll send word to you." That's it. I said good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chapter fifteen is called the Gray Man. Matt. I mean, Gray Man. Tom. <laughs> oh, do you think I'm a character from a book now? I think so. I think so. I think that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, just a gray man tries to assassinate a queen and a knave question mark. Cause we're not sure. And then I wrote, it's a mystery with two exclamation points. I just can't scream. It's a mystery, but pretend I did. It's a mystery. Like that. I scream. I don't remember. It's a yeah. mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. I don't know how this was resolved like <laughs> later on. Like were there, there were two gray men. No, I think it's Slayer that stabs him. Yes, yeah, Slayer was the one who stabs him. Okay. I just don't know if it's Slayer that then just like slipped into the world of dreams, popped out 20 feet over and picked up the bowl. And who were they? So it could have been, if it's not, oh, it is? Oh, well, if it wasn't, it just means that there's somebody else in here. But he's definitely one of that stuff. Who were they trying to kill? (laughs) They were trying to kill the girls. Like, how did Slayer manage to fail at this on his own even? No, no, Slayer wasn't killing the girls. Slayer was there. Slayer's yeah, but why why was Slayer there if not to help the Gray Man? I suspect he's just kind of there to clean up, like just kind of like, hey, it didn't go right. No, well, fuck it, I'll just like you know. Again, it doesn't seems make- odd to send the master assassin not to kill somebody. <laughs> it does. Why use the Gray Man at all? <laughs> it, that's another one that's not really answered. But why not? I, again. And that's Seriously, that's why it seems the like there's a gray man in this chapter. So later on, when there's a gray man with Perrin in the inn, like it makes like they don't have to explain it. <laughs> don't forget no, that, that would that would that would that would have been a good introduction to gray man. I would have been fine with that. Well, we've already seen a gray. That's true. One huh? swan and or rant. Whoops. Um, yeah, but we don't know. No one even knows that that was a gray man still. That could be. But we, we also, there's going to be another gray man in uh, Sherry's bed later. Like we know like oh, later on based fetish. on the information that we know that it was a gray man. Do you huh? think that's a weird fetish that like Black Ajaw sisters have is like you fuck gray man because like you don't really even know who you're looking at and like you don't really know what's going on and like, like next thing you know like a dick just slips inside you. Yeah, damn. Joe's face right now is delighted. No. It sounds like an air dildo. <laughs> I mean, again, just an air dildo takes care of that. Or you want no. the whole body. You, you want the whole body, and you don't know when it's going to happen because your eyes just slide right past it. Next thing, it slides right into you. Like you don't. You can pretend it's. You can just pretend it's anybody's face. Yeah. Why not? I like this. Is a really good theory. Yeah, this, I wrote, this is a good. This is a good chapter explanation for uh, a Gween being Taviran. <laughs> it is one of those that kind of really made everyone think. Well, she just managed to stop at the right time. That kind of. Thing. It's very similar to Rand. <laughs> yeah. When he gets the same situation by the uh, Children of the Light, book six. No, no, just went in book two when the Gray Man shot at him. Oh, yeah, that works, too. That's way Same more Same shit. Like, he stopped short, <laughs> and then it flew by him and hit some other dude. Stop, <laughs> stop short. That's uh, George Cassandra's dad's move. <laughs> <laughs> all, Not right. To, all right. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how much we need to cover in the chapter. I don't want to derail it entirely, but I just, like... So let's say Slayer hadn't stabbed the Gray Man, and they captured him and interrogated him. What would they get out of it? I know. I don't. I don't think they would have gotten anything. I don't think Gray Man can really text. reveal. I think they're just kind of like, like why bother to killers. stab him? Yeah, who cares? Let it be Gray. That's an excellent question. Wait, have, we've never we've never seen a Gray Man like captured and just standing there like. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, yeah, I I just like to wear all gray. 
um, I carry around a bunch of knives. I got a lot of knives. I don't know. If I know I'm blurry. Don't adjust knives. your glasses. This is just, <laughs> just the way I look. <laughs> we, <laughs> we talked about a <laughs> We talked 10 years ago about how the, what was the gray man doing before that? Like, was he waiting there for like 20 years and finally got like a letter that's like, oh, I got a mission. <laughs> Which, I thought was amazing. <laughs> Which is sort of funny that we're sort of going down the same idea, but in a different way. Like, what happens when they catch one? Nothing, I guess. <laughs> My name's uh, Steve. Uh, Most you know. undercover secret agent when he comes out of cover still has nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a poor farmer. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I am. Yeah, and I killed I just, you. I, I'm, I'm confused because why pick pick up the crossbow and why? Can't I like I? the idea that Sherryum sent not not sent the gray man, but maybe let him in or something. Just same similar situation as Inktar, and then she stabs him to cover it up, and then oh, just like circles back up the same staircase and just goes, "Oh, you found a gray man with a knife in his chest." <laughs> Like, it makes way more sense. Like, why did they make it Slayer later, you know? <laughs> Weird choice. I mean, <clears throat> you know, honestly, it really does, at this point, it makes less sense, like, you know, having read it, like, oh, that's the one who did it. That makes sense. Now thinking about it, you didn't need to do that. That's also, like, it's weird because they set it up like it's a red herring. Like you, you want to think it's Sherium, and then later on you find out it's Slayer. Yeah. But really, Sherium is Black Asha. So oh it's God. like a I'm double gonna... red herring. <laughs> oh shit! I'm gonna teleport and kill this guy, and then teleport and pick up the zero, but not teleport and kill these girls. No, <laughs> don't let don't do that. Let let them investigate it. Uh, maybe what we don't know is the great like Slayer was standing right behind the gray man and like hit his elbow and it shot off to the side and he's like this is all a plan <laughs> <laughs> I fucked this up my You're not I, actually wondered, supposed it, to kill I wondered if it <clears throat> I wondered if it was a Trollocs in the uh, Stone of Tear situation where like the gray man was trying to kill them and Slayer <clears throat> now that's possible I don't mind that idea at all because you know I mean there's already at least Lanfear is in the tower. We already know that. Later on, <clears throat> who is it? Is it Samira who's in the tower? No. Um, we're just trying to Masana. stop it, maybe. It's yeah, Masana. Masana. Yeah. Masana, yes. Yeah, yeah. Masana. Uh, Tom's right, because <clears throat> Samira is Sean Chan. Um, I remember that specifically now because the audiobooks call her name Masana. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, there could be two different thoughts on what the fuck to do here. Or yeah. it could be and fear not agreeing necessarily with killing the girls off because of uh, she already doesn't really follow Ishmael's uh, orders. So, I mean, that's probably the most sensical option of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I wrote um, the Basilisk kills a gray man right outside the Gryffindor rooms. Professor McGonagall catches the girls, sends them to the rooms. <laughs> so, you know who catches the girls? It's a uh, Oh, fuck. What's his name? Filch. Filch thinks that the girls killed the sna his uh, cat, and therefore... <laughs> the gray yeah. man's a cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that cat just throw a knife? I don't, <laughs> I don't know why you had to do the cat sound, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Did that cat just throw a knife? All right, I might be a little stuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's finish. All right, we're on chapter 16! 16. What's it called? It's called Hunters 3. It's uh, a Gween and the Need still. All right. I wrote The worst family has a shitty reunion in the Nades room. The girls discuss the Black Aja in that. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Gallad and Gawain follow Elaine into the Needs rooms. Gallad and the Gween want to bone. Who's Gawain? That's what I wrote. That's. By the way, this is me circling back around to my original thought from a few episodes ago, where I would like to track every moment that a Gween has a huge hard on for a Galad and vice versa. Have you started? And at what point? Yeah, this is number two. Well, I don't even know what number <laughs> this is. This is way up on. Uh, excuse me. We need to keep track of it now. <laughs> I want this to to keep track of 
Gawain and her actually, the idea of Gawain and her actually being together. And this is the first instance of it because Elaine's like, why don't you date Gawain? He's so much better. And she's like, Gawain, he hasn't looked at me twice. Yeah. And then she, and then she's like, it'd be so cool if you were my sister. And I'm like, what the fuck? What is it going on in your brain right now? We just told you we're going to hunt the Black Aja. He, yeah. yeah be well, your I'm, sister if she marries Galad. But it goes along with, and again, I, I, I don't know if you know this. I like the books a lot. They may be my favorite series of all time. Definitely are. But there are some things that Robert Jordan, when he writes women, is just kind of like, like Elaine, the first time she's not like, this is fun. We should be friends. And then like, you know, this is fun. You should fuck my brother. We can be sisters. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what's going on here? It's like, you should fuck my brother's dick inside. We could be related. This is a... Uh... The weird part is that Elaine, like, I mean, there might be some weird actual desire to have a Gween as a true, like, in-law, sister-in-law or whatever, but, like, it's still one. It circles back around to Galad's not my real brother because if she considered Galad a brother, like, that's the same fucking thing. And then, two, it's just, like, what the fuck? Just, like, she clearly likes him and he clearly likes her. Like, who gives a fuck about Gwen? Like, why are you shoehorning your actual brother into the scenario? Also, you know, to a certain extent, what your brother did like, let's say Gwen really did like a Gwen. Is it really a smart idea to, like, foist him off on someone who's going on what seems to be a death sentence? You know, like, like yeah. you're about to go, it seems like if you loved your brother, you'd say... Uh, why don't you not become encumbered with someone hunting the most dangerous thing until the dragon was reborn? Uh, you know, just, you know, my thoughts at least. Let me clarify. Do you not I don't think, wait, wait, wait. I don't think that Gwen doesn't love a Gwen. That I believe. It's just the part where a Gwen actually starts loving him back that I find, like, the only moment I think it truly happens is when she gets sucked into his dream. So I really just want to, like, and I so, think her brain got warped. <laughs> and I, I'm just like, I want to make sure it doesn't happen before that. Anyway, go ahead, Tom. <clears throat> oh, well, I mean, pretty obviously, this is Elaine trying to fuck a Gwen's boyfriend and trying oh. to get her to screw somebody else to break them up. It's a pretty shitty thing. Oh, that's true. That's good. This is <clears throat> keep safe by the bell type stuff. Uh, new season. Because, whoops. Yeah. And it's got to be the new season because Screech is dead. <laughs> It'd be the new season. It'd be Ooh. the old new season. Uh, so other than that, I mean, the Hunter's three obvious, you know, she is. Yeah, brought- and Eve counts to three and then the boys leave and then it and then it and then they bring Elaine in. So it's the Hunter's three times three. Uh, let's see. Is there well, a- I wrote Elaine lies here because she says, I'm no fool. <laughs> of course, I'm scared. I like I mean, that. we all know she's a fool. So I'm like, she's that's a, a cool. That's a straight lie. <laughs> also, this seems like something out of a movie. There's a real quick like, like, well, we're, t- we're supposed to black uh, hunt the black Aja. The black Aja, we could be killed. Killed? Like, uh, and, like, you know, you're screaming everything in like in duplicate, like, you know, this this isn't worded, dumb fucks. Like you know, just I want to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the hunt, the uh, the Maryland, the Maryland, the black is shot. Like just like like. Uh, meanwhile, next door. Interesting. These glory holes were really paying off. These like, glory I, holes really let me know what's going on in here. <laughs> and I have an air dildo. I want to know. That's something else we should keep track of. After Elaine swears on the oath rod, if she ever says the words "I'm not stupid" or "I'm not a fool," because <laughs> it, it has to be not. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as long as she believes it's true. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Fuck. That, that's a good point. Yeah. Goddamn loopholes. It's another uh, reference to George. I'm not stupid. Uh, I can't say it. I'm not a fool. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Agrees everything. Like, well, we can tell Elaine she's not. Ooh. Oh, I, I actually can't finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and then Abe's like, we can tell Elaine she's cannon fodder. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Truth. 
At least you believe it to me. Um, anyways, the, this weird kind of, and I get their concern because nothing's really been, and you know, like, like Baron set it up as we saw from uh, Swan's point of view, like they really don't know if Matt's going to be healed. Uh, so Nynaeve's just kind of yeah. like, well, don't, yeah. I'll take care of it and grabs her bag of herbs, which I know yeah, is the concern. The concern for Matt though, like, yeah, almost wasn't non-existent. And then it sort of just kept popping up and it makes you feel like, cause at first I'm just like, do they even care? Like, and then when they finally get to Tarvalon, they're like, what about Matt? What about Matt? And I'm like, Oh, okay. They, they, well, I mean, they, they cared before they got to the tower. They cared in the meeting with the uh, T-Pain. Yeah. They care now. I yeah. Think yeah. Care That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like when they, it was uh, during the journey that they seemed like they didn't, notice or care almost but like when they got to tarvalon like walking in the gates that's when they started saying like you're gonna heal him right away right like what's going on with him what's going on with him yeah, and i'm like okay fine like, Jesus. yeah 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 and then uh someone enters so so suspenseful oh that's the next chapter it's 17 what's it called red the red sister, sister. <clears throat> i should write this down occasionally but i never do nope it's fine this it's is a it team still, is, it, is it still a Gwen's point of view uh yeah. Yes. All right. I wrote Olaida's a bitch. Sharon comes to get them for Matt's healing. They're bad at Black Aja hunting. I mean, they're surrounded by Black Aja the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just not black, but um. So. <laughs> You're really bad at this. They're literally standing next to you. Like, they're nearly assassinated, and Sharon comes up, and she's basically just like. I'm pretty obviously black Aja and they're just like, I mean, we're going to go talk. Like, we're going to go have a conversation. And then she comes back and they're just like, hello friend. Hello. <clears throat> we believe you. I do like how like Nineveh was immediately like, do you notice she didn't ask about the dagger who stabbed that guy? Do you notice? And like, she is like asking sharing questions on the ramp and stuff. And then circling back oh, yeah, to this chapter, got, like fucking like she got daggers scared at her, which yeah, again, circling back <laughs> to this chapter, it <laughs> like, what the fuck? You can't just like ask a nice and I. And she's like, we got to take our fucking chances or we're never going to figure anything out. She's like, all right, fine. Yeah, good enough. <clears throat> the name is hardcore formulating a plan to start catching Black Ash already. Yeah. And the first person she starts with is the one that can spank her anytime she wants. Yeah. yeah and she's so also about to storm out of a room to go heal Matt on her own. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, she's very proactive <laughs> with yes, herbs. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> with herbs. <laughs> well, that's a means to making herself channel because she's got anger. Yeah, true. We all know. Hilariously, it probably would have worked. I don't think so, just because mm -hmm. it. Takes, I think it makes a full circle uh, with a sun angry. Yeah, it with, takes the full circle of those weaklings, Jono. It's true. They don't use it quite. As, but I think that there's a specific weed pretty much for this type of. You're shit. talking. You're talking about the person that healed Stilling and uh, cleansed the the male half of the power. I think she yeah. could have uh, healed Matt with some herbs. It's just a dagger. <laughs> a little poultice and some sewing. She would have just laughed at this like, what is this? Oh, all I have to do is wrap it up in a piece of cloth. Healed. They basically took her first major accomplishment away from her by doing I sprinkled this. some salt on it. Evil's salt. gone. <laughs> We're not seasoning a steak. That's the kids. I am. That's she how just, I hey, she just uses the herbs to focus her channel. I yeah, think no, she could have done it. That's how she does it. Yeah. That's it. She, she would have she she got like a Ritalin or something. No, she gets she a good sear on both sides. <laughs> think about it. She gets all worked up that he's dying. She's using her herbs. And then she thinks about him running off in the middle of Shadar Logo like a dickhead to go find the dagger. That would infuriate her. Yeah. Then it's full it power. Work. Yeah. That would have just opened her up that last little bit, full power. I like not that. a lot of people. Not a lot of people make Nadeve angrier than Matt. I think it would have worked out. That's like true. Just, <laughs> That's true. She would have been at like at she would have been at one hundred percent capacity. So um, anyway, a lot of conversation. She comes in and looks at the herbs and is like, "What? You're not a fucking wisdom anymore, you idiot. Sit down. <laughs> I have questions for you." And I was like, <laughs> "We were gonna make some chicken." Yeah, I was just going to the kitchens because I'm a scullion now <laughs> and I need to go cook. Oh, this all makes sense now. <clears throat> uh, it, fucking Elida. She, like, like I already mentioned, you know, you may have broken a tradition of a thousand years again. No, I'm the next ring of the tradition. Not a problem. Your next rung. Uh, it, it just kind of bemuses me that that's a conversation. 
Uh, also, uh, she should have been like a thousand years. Calm down. It's a wheel of time. <laughs> <laughs> Traditions so, come and go. Yeah, and it come, all comes come back fast. around. Why isn't everyone in this entire book series more laid back is what Tom's asking. <laughs> Kyle Relax, back, bro. man. Time's a wheel. Just, just wait three hundred years. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's all. It's all good. Everything just circles back. What did you do? You don't think have to worry about depicted, anything. They depicted Heron Fell. You know, like the best philosopher. Like instead of smoking a pipe, like he's just always like just getting high. Like, well, we time. just don't know what's in the pipe. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Number one, he was definitely always getting high. Are you it, shitting? Yeah, he was one hundred percent. He's hurting everything. <laughs> so, like, time's a wheel, bro. And. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Try again. So, what if instead of the wheel of time, it was called Times of Wheel, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst series I've ever read. I love it. <laughs> Times of Wheel, no, bro. But it, but it was exactly the same otherwise. I would be like, this is the best book series ever. What's it called? <laughs> Times of Wheel, bro. <laughs> Times of Wheel, bro. <laughs> very, very weirdly. It's weird. called, it's called Taub. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been talcast. Oh, that's good. I so, like uh, I, I, you know, Elida at least has the testicle, test, uh, testicular fortitude to say, you know, we have black aja amongst us, which is, she's she's right. You know, I, 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 she's yeah, uh, I, she's not wrong. Like she's one of those people that like is so close to being right. And again, so- Elida at this point in time isn't the Elida that I hate. Like she's still. No, I, I, I disagree. I think she's too stern and too set in her own deep assumptions and that anything that veers from those. True, and that, and that does set her down the path she goes down later. But yeah. currently at this juncture, she's just I think doing she might what have been she the thinks is her job. And Marilyn of all time, if it wasn't for Peyton Fan and Alvy Earn. <laughs> yeah, I like that. She might have been fucking amazing if it wasn't out for a year. Yeah, no, she would have been awful. She would have been her own fucking like crusade just as against everything. She'd have been fucking miserable. Just what like was wrong know. with the crusades. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I've got no answer. Are you anti-Catholic? <laughs> I am pro Dan Brown. <laughs> How where do you fall on that? Uh Anyway, so I think oh, like, it's one of the best books ever. I think it's the best book. I'm a big fan of National Treasures one and two, and uh, I can't stop watching it whenever they come on TV. Um, so anyway, <laughs> she extends her protection to uh, you one because of Elaine. There's a really funny meme from the insurrection of the Capitol where it's like Nick Cage is in the background, like running off the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I was like, "That's this is all a ruse," and it just it didn't make like Nick Cage is in the background of the Constitution. It was really, it was really good. <laughs> Wait, Nicholas Cage is Q. <laughs> <laughs> I finally figured Nick it Cage. out. I don't know if you guys knew this, but he's also on the cover of Book One. <laughs> what if that was the first first national treasure? Was just like, how are we going to steal the Constitution? And it's like, dun dun, wait for it. And then instead of cutting to the next scene where they have this plan, it's just like, well, we create a lot of internet bots. We get on Twitter. <laughs> and we started going on Reddit. <laughs> it's like a twelve year plan. <laughs> Side note, if you get a jeweler's loop out and look at the cover of uh, the Eye of the World, then he's holding the Constitution. (laughs) (laughs) A magnifying glass, but a jeweler's one. (laughs) The the first first clue. Secret world. lies with Charlotte. That doesn't make sense. It's so weird that somebody just casually dropped the term jeweler's loop. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need high power. <laughs> you need a high power magnification. <laughs> but also not a microscope. <laughs> this is a magnifying glass? Baby <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I've got a jeweler's loop. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, she wants to know about uh, maybe a little bit of Matt, but definitely Rand, and then Sherryam, not Black Aja, enters. All right, well, hold on. Both Elida and Suwan point out how how Elaine is being stupid in like the course of three chapters. 
I'm just, it's just a note that I need to be yeah. on the recording. We can move on. It never stops. And as much as I hate Elida, they keep interrupting her and she has to keep just being like, what are you doing? I'm going to die. You're 16. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Oh, well. Um, there's a weird, like, tangent in the Gween's brain going like, I guess Elaine said Elida can tell when people are lying or something like that with the one power or something. So she's like so freaked out. She's going to be able to tell she's lying. And I was like, is that a thing? No. It is definitely do that? Uh, I think that's just because Elaine grew up with her since she yeah, was Yeah, that's just two. a little girl thing where like Elida was like, yeah. I get I know what you're doing, kid. Yeah, it's that and the combination of the foretelling, which was, again, very rare and never relevant. But I, I would think that the answer is, like you said, it's just growing up with her. I know you're lying, little girl. Oh, I am. I'm actually very dumb. Okay, we know that. Anyway, back to what John was saying. Sherry comes in. Yeah, Sherry comes in. I love that. Uh, like this, just goes so bizarrely. Just kind of like you know. Uh, so naive asks, like, well, what about the body? And she's like, body. That means you've already told Elaine. God. Yeah, I can tell by Elaine's lack of reaction that you revealed the thing that I told you not to say out loud. <laughs> You're going to be really good at having the black Aja, which I'm one. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like these these girls are Batman level detectives. It's incredible. <clears throat> like anyway. Busted immediately. Like we're gonna have to find a way to trick people into revealing their black houses. Like you're revealing that you're searching for them the media. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, uh, from the green yeah. point of view, just kind of like, well, as long as Sherry was not black as you, like, as if, as long as, you know, that, don't worry about that one. Oh, reviewed it, revealed it coming in a few books. Uh, the question what happens in her bed, because now I've got this like, real exciting scenario about Gray Man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a, a new Gray Man dead in her bed or the same one? <laughs> it's been a great, wow, that's a good question. <laughs> a gray Man dead in her bed. It's like each. And she's still just every lying. time it kind of it would okay. kind of like come full circle for her punishments later on as a black Aja that's failed. <laughs> every time Sharon finds a dead body, she's like, "I'll take care of this." <laughs> <laughs> I really like corpses. Is Rigor Mortis dead in yet? Uh, just about to. I'll take care of this. <laughs> just I'll get rid of this body. Just up in the air. Just in I'll take bed. my room. <laughs> Take that to my room for examination. Take its pants okay. off. <laughs> the guy, the gardener guys come in to get rid of the body and they're like, why is he not wearing any clothes? <laughs> Sharing him senior quote was take its pants off. <laughs> why the hell did you take a pants off? How the hell did it dress like a gray man? So that's all I cast for this week. <laughs> if you have any comments or questions, the best way to find us is on Twitter at Twatcast. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You can email Damn us. Twadcast.com. <laughs> Twadcast theme songs brought to you by Taffy and Bennington at Sing with Taffy on Twitter and Anarchy 101 on YouTube. And also everyone's heard musician on Twitter of time, Andrew at Andrew Genhald on Twitter and Andrew Bard of time on YouTube. I hate you so much for doing the second part so fast. <laughs> um... I'll, sh- I'll shorten that one up somehow. And we'll find, we'll find a way to. Oh, we're on Patreon. Way more often than we used to be. At Patreon.com. Patreon.com slash Twadcast. If you enjoy, well, because you did enjoy the show, help us out, give us some money, and enjoy exclusive sexual content only on Patreon. What if somebody's well, trying to go to... Sexual content's for everyone. <laughs> what if somebody's trying to go to... Uh, donate money to the show, but since Jono bungled it, they're just like, I don't know what Patreon is. <laughs> <laughs> I keep typing in patreon.com slash podcast and nothing comes up. <laughs> P-A-Y. It's just pornography. <laughs> Join us next week for the Wheel of Time book three, The Dragon Reborn. Is that true? Maybe. Join us next week. Next week. Know, it might I... be the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. Join us is. next week for maybe the <laughs> Royal also- Rumble. And probably not next or, week, or maybe, or or maybe part five covering chapters eighteen through twenty-two. We don't know. It could be the Royal Rumble. Could be part five. I'm Joe. Say good night, Jono. Good night, Jono. And Tom. Study your math, Joe.
Keep the change. It's one, two, It'll three. Be animals. Among the first to start, the twat cause was so smart to lovingly bash our favorite books. But that was long ago, and now they've grown the show, and now they got us in their hooks. Don't throw coins to these bastards, they need bars of gold at least. Someone please keep them afloat. Now let's listen as they once again ramble through a book. Let's get the fucking One of them is Tom, but he is barely on. Sometimes he calls into the show. Another one is Joe, no. Is he their joker? Oh no. And Joe, is he the stupid one? Welcome to the Twat, cause we will share our love for books and all our hate in every episode. We'll entertain you, make you laugh so hard you barely can stand up. That is the Twatcast Go. 